Welcome back everyone to the weekly and daily Axon Bulletin. Um, we are here on this Tuesday afternoon. The countdown to Christmas is on, 12 days to Christmas. I think we're all more excited about the countdown to domestic football returning. Um, it's been a long old slog, Lawrence. I know you've just joined us, uh, Martin, but you know, but we're heading towards eventual football coming back, proper football, um, even though this World Cup is hotting up. We're going to get there. It's the last week. We won't have anything to properly talk about. There is still stuff to get out there. Um, as our tagline says, our right back, Josip Juranovic, is going to be up against Lionel Messi in co tonight in the World Cup. And obviously, Alistair Johnson arrived at Celtic Park yesterday. We'll be chatting around that. There's some other transfer business to talk about. And then we'll have a wee look forward to, to Saturday. It's really good to be able to say that. Obviously, next week, we'll be on and we'll be looking forward to that game against Livingston and a bitterly cold Wednesday night, which... You know, I would have taken that, um, and that in the start of that World Cup, I would have taken it. So that's what we want to uh, talk about. And Lawrence, let's kick off with, with, with two top guys. You were in the company over the weekend, Tosh McKinley and Tam Boyd. They're always in good form. I bet they were at the weekend. Oh, cracking, you know, St James's Club up in Coat Bridge, and it's really an up based in St Bartholomew's Chapel Hall. Uh, you know, Brian Ellis and Elvis put on a, a cracking night for their club, and yeah. Treble winning captain Tommy Boyd, you know, great stories, you know, you see all that, you know, from the dark days to being a treble winning captain. And Tosh McKinley, one of the heroes of ending a trophy route in 95, was uh, picking up his Axon zipper. I mean, oh, he's got some sartorial elegance, so if, if Tosh likes an Axon zipper, you know, they must be good. Do you think that'll go with the, the free piecer? Do you think the old suit jacket's going to get binned for the, the Axon jacket? Well, I don't know, it could be on his next scouting mission. He may be wearing could, an axe on zipper in a crowd. Could be, could be pick absolutely. Up, um, pick, two, up that two. Many, pick up that many awards and stuff on axe on me. Uh, should develop an axe on tuxedo. And then there you go. That, that, would right, that would be right up Tosh's street, by the way, Martin, because anytime you see him, he always looks immaculate. I don't think <laughs> I've ever seen him in anything apart from um, the old three piece suit. But good night. <laughs> good to hear that. And also some news relating to a Celtic state of mind. I've been privy to, to hearing and seeing the, the video of the, the glory in the dream which our very own Lawrence is featured in, if you're any Love Actually fans out there, Hugh Grant has not got a look in with this man starring all in the video by the way, <laughs> but that's coming very very soon um, but on Saturday if you haven't picked up Christmas presents late, if you weren't battling like myself at Silverburn on Sunday, we have the granny in the land trying to pick up things last minute Celtic jersey is out there. It's the Celtic jersey. It's not the Celtic shirt. I know that was something that Paul battled with here and there. Um, but it is out there. If you haven't picked up your copy yet, it's out there in all good available bookstores and it's available um, to buy online in connection with your, your Tom Boyd there, as you were talking earlier, Lawrence, um, as a collector's edition, which includes a, a fantastic signed picture um, of Tom Boyd. So that's out there. And Danny McGrain, um, someone who... Uh, wore the hoops jersey through thick and thin um, through the end of the end uh, of nine in a row in the, the 70s through Billy McNeil's period, Davy Hayes period at the club um, right through and um, we'll be signing copies of the book at the penalty spot in Sword Street, Kevin's Place on Saturday. Lawrence, just remind you what, what time is that from? 12 to 2 I think, I hope I've got the time right I'll be there as well but, uh, 12 to two. There Was it just the, the Celtic jersey or Celtic shirt? Did they not think of the Celtic tap? Nah, that's too. Come on, a bit of class here. Come on, you know we're talking about torch with a free piece of there. Um, so that's that out of the way. And, and Martin Lawrence, don't worry, I've not been hanging about with Peter Grant that much that he's starting to have an impact in my fashion sense. Um, it's a bit chilly in here, so I thought I would stick the old turtle on. I thought you were going Martin, to start pointing. Eh? Thought you were going to start pointing. No, no, not at all. Um, Martin, let let's kick off. This is you know I don't want to call it career defining for Josip Juranovic but he's one game away for a World Cup final but you surprised with his performance against Brazil I, I don't know how much of the World Cup you've been watching but you know going up against Vinicius for the third time and whatever that was two two three months he was absolutely outstanding and the reason I think Vinicius get hooked um, around 60 minutes to be replaced by Real Madrid teammate Rodrigo was due to Eberman Juranovic exactly I, I, I'm Exactly on the same page as you right there. I believe Juranovic went to the club, uh, went to the World Cup, sorry, rated around the 15 million mark. 
throughout his performances in the Champions League for Celtic and stuff. Uh, I believe you put yourself on that level. <laughs> uh, his performances at the World Cup, I've certainly seen him extend that bracket, I believe, a lot higher. He's certainly heard uh, rumours and murmurs of Barcelona entering the fray for his transfer. And actually, they've just watched them neutralise their main rival's main weapon. Yeah. Just watched them at the World Cup neutralise this player. They're looking at his age, they're looking at this move, and they're thinking it makes sense. And I'm thinking... Maybe we get to see a Celtic player lift the World Cup in the dream of dreams, and maybe we get 56 million. Who knows? Yeah, you know what I mean? That would be, that would be a bad uh, Christmas bonus. Um, but, Lawrence, you know, I, I think, you know, as Martin touched on there, in terms of his performance up, I know it's isolation, it's one game against Vinicius and Rodrigo. We knew Atletico Madrid were already interested in the player. I know you've got another La Liga team. Um, you know, it is only reports at this point in time. But Lawrence, just to ask you, going into the World Cup, what would you have valued at Juranovic at? And having now got to this point and been an integral player for Croatia, what do you think that adds on to his transfer value? Well, I thought it was an easy 10 to 15 million before the World Cup. You know, if he keeps playing like this, I think you're putting it another 10 on, aren't you? Anyway, it's, easy. you know, and if he lifts the World Cup, you know, it's, it's more, isn't it? It's doubling, it's maybe up to 30 million. Possibly it's money. It could be. It's the money, that's what we need. The Benjamins. Show me the Benjamins and you can have them, you know? There you go. Bring us the and, money. <laughs> and to talk about another um, Celtic right back, Lawrence, you've been corrected here by Kevin. Just to remind us all, pre match book signing is 11 uh, to half one. I think with Danny McGrain and he'll be signing the Celtic jersey book. So that, that's there. For anybody who is in or around the area, once that signed, it'll be a lovely piece and you can get a bit of Danny's patter, which never um, ever misses. Sorry. 12.30. Everybody's getting this wrong today. 11 till 12.30, right for kick-off time. I'll be in sunny Aberdeen um, at, at that point in time. So unfortunately, I won't get along. I'll get a good chat with Danny at Big Billy's statue unveiling and his lovely wife, Lorraine. So if you want your, your Celtic jersey signed copy of the book, get along to the penalty spot on Saturday. Let's go back to, to Josip Juranovic then, um, Martin. You know, Champions League-wise, has he... Has he surprised you at all? Because I think for the group as a whole, um, there were some players we maybe thought, yep, they hadn't performed at the level we expected. I think for me, Josip Juranovic has been a you know a standout player since he arrived at the club last summer. Um, but has his performances at the World Cup surprised you at all? I think, uh, see, when you see old crowds that used to go to the football game and they had those things they used to spin and it made a noise, that's mm -hmm. the noise Josip Juranovic's neck makes every time a Spanish football team was mentioned. Uh, he said it himself in his own comments. He said he switched off sometimes at Celtic in the Champions League. I believe that was him trying to maybe defend his past performances, given his level of performance right now at the World Cup. Seems to be that grade above, like he's made that progress. He's given his full application. Uh, this is what I'm really capable of, is what he's saying. But uh, I do feel that his head's been spinning for a long time. I uh, love the attitude of AJ at his presser yesterday. Uh, really refreshing. I could just picture that scene when uh, Joseph says, uh, tomorrow off, boss, and Ange just whips his neck around and looks at him. Uh, I don't I don't imagine AJ would say anything like that. Yeah. Uh, he seems intent and passionate on training. But I'm sure we'll get on to him uh, when you want to. I believe, uh, like I said, Juranovic's head is spinning. You know what I mean? He's even had to say to his agent, look, stop notifying me of these things while I'm at the tournament. Basically, my head's still spinning. You know what I mean? He knows where he's going. He's fast-tracking the exit. I believe someone at the presser tried to draw a comment on it. Uh, they asked if uh, Alistair Johnston seen himself as an international defender being third string at Glasgow Celtic, trying to basically draw a comment on him or get a take on what was happening inside the club. And he avoided that masterfully. Uh, highly intelligent. Love these presser. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. We'll, we'll get on. We'll get on to these presser. Um, other people are coming in with valuations. Round about where you two guys are saying we've got Francisco coming in here. They say that he'd be asking for thirty million as a price for Judah um, if he makes it to the final. We've got other ones coming in here. They say bidding open at twenty million. We, we know that in the summer, uh, Lawrence, it had been reported that. that there was a fee of around fifteen million. Would be when Celtic would start listening to offers. I don't think the club were anywhere um, intent in selling them if a bid of fifteen million came in. But surely this World Cup 
has upped that. But I, I, I thought, you know, what was really interesting, and again, I think speaks to the, the culture that Ange Postecoglou's uh, built at the club, is the fact that after Croatia's 4-1 victory over Canada, um, Juranovic sought out Johnston to have a chat with him. He didn't reveal exactly what he had in that chat, but I think that just says about the individuals and characters that the manager has brought to the club that you're, you're getting situations like that actually happening. Yeah, I mean, Ange talks about that, doesn't he? He's, he has an interview, he, he judges someone's character before bringing them in. Not just with Johnson, but he done the same with Maeda after the game in Japan, didn't he? So, mm. you know, we do need people that can handle the pressure, that have got strong character. They want to be team players rather than the, the, the me players, just individuals. Uh, so, yeah, you know, he's fitted in well. It does look like, you know, we won't have too many more, more viewings of him in a Celtic shot, but... Listen, wish him the best for the World Cup as it goes. And, uh, yeah, Johnston, you know, it was a decent press conference. He's got to get the, the jersey off of a Ralston first, though, hasn't he? Well, listen, let, let's bring that into the conversation because I think that's a very fair point and it, it's not um, right to dismiss Tony Ralston because, Martin, he's played a lot of football for Celtic this season. He's continually played a lot of football under Ange Postecoglou since he came in. He was one of the standout players last season and again he gives you everything in the game he'll be the stick-on starter at Petodre on Saturday and for the time being in these games um, obviously Johnson won't be available for selection until the derby game at Ibrox um, at the beginning of 2023 and yet to see when Juranovic will actually arrive back from the World Cup but for this point in time it really is Tony Nelson's jersey to lose isn't it? Yes, yes, I, I believe that myself uh, actually uh, I'd be an active member of the community. I go and comment on a lot of the pressers and stuff on YouTube uh, when Glasgow Celtic post them. Uh, they highlighted the comment that I posted because I says uh, about AJ coming to Celtic. I says, uh, don't underestimate the man who stands in front of you. Don't just look to Josip Juranovic as your inspiration or where you could go or where you could take your career. Uh, look at the man who stands right in front of you. Look at the bricky. We were all packing his bags not so long mm. ago. And look at him now. You know what I mean? He's Antonio Ralstinio. We all love him. Uh, we want him in there every week. And the same with Greg Taylor. He's a a, 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 vir a virtual man mountain now. You know what I mean? Compared to what he was just recently. He's The growth has, has been phenomenal. So I think uh, young Alistair will be intent. And he knows exactly whose back he's looking at. It, it, it will be Antonio Ralstinio's. Uh, because I believe he will. He will be the, the commanding defender, at least for the rest of this season. Given AJ time to settle, about six months, uh, seems to be the model that Andrew's going for. Bring these players in, six months settle, and then get their, uh, get them building and bring the best out of their performances. And hopefully we continue to see that. Just to flip on that, Martin, do, do you then definitely think that, that Jura's going to leave it in January? Do you know if there's any point that, that Celtic could try and, and keep him in next summer? Or do you think that's not in Celtic's best interest to do that? No, it, and that's completely not in the club's best interest, in my opinion. In my opinion, uh, Jura coming back, uh, at that point, his value is completely maximised. It's not only maximised, it's beyond maximised. It's hyperinflated, depending on his performance at the World Cup. I would bring him back, I would wrap him in cotton wool, I'd put him on a shelf like a Fabergé egg, and I would let people marvel at his splendour and try and get as much money as I possibly could for him. I would not put him on against uh, in the old firm and give our rivals a chance to go, think you're getting 56 million, many you get, much you're getting for him missing a leg. Because I know that's the calibre, that's the calibre that we face. That's the, that's the infrastructure within Scottish football that we would face. I would wrap him in cotton wool and protect him. I would not expose such a crucial asset to damage. Just no way. Lawrence, in, in terms of, you know, that, uh, is it right that Celtic just now treat Josip Juranovic as purely an asset? I mean, of course, he's top football player. He has been for Celtic since arriving at the club. But just due to that situation that we find ourselves, um, you know, the market's going to change. We know January can be a difficult market, Lawrence. But because of the situation where you're coming out of World Cup right into it, do you think it just makes sense to, to, to treat him as that asset? And if the bids are going to come in in January, it's right now that you've already did your succession planning and bringing Johnson into the club that you can let Juranovic go and pick his move? I, I think we'll already be talking at clubs just now. But, you know, obviously the signing can't happen in January, but I think we'll have bids on the table or you have having initial discussions with them just now. And it's really going to depend how, 
how far along that is. You know, if I've got you know discussions on twenty five million, you're going yeah, just don't get injured. You know, just watch what you do with this player. Tony Ralston, we're hoping it's a good game against Aberdeen. You, mm. you know, so if we start racking up the points with Ralston in there, you've got Johnston to get a, get a place in the squad. If you already get a deal in place for say twenty five million, why did you risk him? Yeah, you, you know, Ralston's proven he can do it SPFL level. Mm. You know, we we'll now get a, you know a third right back there. We've got still to see what he can do. You know, for us, but yeah. Depending on how far along it is, if we don't have anything concrete, you're, you know, I would say, well, you'd want to play on Sunday and keep his fitness up, but, you know, Tory in for others, probably. Uh, yeah, well, every game. But it remember that situation. Ibrox has struggled. Remember we had say that again? At Ibrox, he struggled. Uh, mm. Remember his first game there? You had to switch me over to the right. right yeah, to help but, but, but was Juranovic not playing his first game at Ibrox at left back, if I remember, right, with Alston at right back? I'm sure it was at left back. No, I'm sure it was at left back. No, somebody can check that out for us. I'm sure Judah played left back for us his first game at uh, Ibrox. I'm sure get a goal down, down the left hand side or right. Mm. He was caught in position. Uh, what what game are you talking football. about here? August? Or... Or... Right, okay. So that's the second game at Ibrox. That's when they, they went yeah. ballistic with Aaron Ramsey scored at first. Um, yeah. But I thought he came into a game after that. You know, sometimes it can be a bit. Um, but yeah, first game he played left back out of position and then another right back. And that's been something that's been quite interesting actually about the World Cup because, you know, his manager had said that he had been quite confident playing him at left back, which again strikes big uh, ticks for any club interested in him, that versatility that he's got in, it, in his game to do that. Um, but, you know, I, I room Tim, I, I, I would like to keep him at the club. I want his Celtic to keep the best players at the club, but I know that the, the system, you know, just doesn't work like that. We've brought somebody else in. We've spent a bit of money on them, and it's likely um, that, that Juranovic, because of that situation, um, will, will have to go. Um, but until this, he's a Celtic player. We wish him all the best tonight against Argentina. It's going to be a tough old game, but if he has a performance like he did against Brazil, no why Croatia can't do it. Um, they just keep doing it at World Cups, don't they, Martin? But um, it's yeah, can, can I just come back in on that? Sorry, bro, yeah. before you. Sounds like you're going to move on to something else. No, I, know, like, I, I love the sound of my own voice, bro. I love to waffle. Uh, just on Juranovic again, right? That man right now is a golden child. You know what I mean? I say to every Celtic fan right now, start singing his song again, even though he's not there and not playing. Sing it as loud as you can, because every time you sing it, uh, he'll know how much we love him, and other clubs will know how much we value him. And his price just Sup- continues to soar. Supposedly you know he I mean? sings that, and in around Lennox Town, there was a, a clip. You know, you were you were saying there, Martin, that you, you look at some of the videos on YouTube that Celtic post, and a few of the players were saying he likes to uh, cut about singing that. So we he all, certainly we all likes love that, that right? Celtic fans have that creative gift, right? That flair to inspire and create. Love it about Glasgow Celtic. It's why it's what makes us one of the greatest clubs in the entire world, if not the greatest club in the entire world. Uh, the creative flair of the fans, all that adds. We heard uh, Alistair Johnston talk about Victor Wanyama uh, getting stopped in the street by gangs of Scottish fans, even in Scotland uh, and Canada as well, sorry. Uh, he encounter groups of Celtic fans who will sing his name and chant his legend. You know what I mean? That's that's what it is to be a Celtic player, to be globally recognised, to be worldwide famous mm. at superstar levels. You know, and That I mean? has been something that, uh, that Johnson touched on yesterday when he spoke about, you know, kind of yeah. having to adapt to that being recognised in the street and everything else that, that that goes around that. Something I wanted to ask you was, in terms of Tony Ralston, we, we touched on that there. He's going to play um, at Petaudry on Saturday. You know, for Alistair Johnson, I don't really think it'll be a process of getting up to speed. He's just came off the back of a World Cup, looks ready to go. He's in training yesterday. He's going to have those weeks in the training ground with Yuki Kobayashi too, that if there's any sort of issues, which I don't think there will be, and they'll be at the point that they want to be by the start of January. But what I want to ask you, Martin, about uh, Tony Ralston is that if you have a, a situation where, you know, Ralston's an absolute standout player in these games, you know, at Petaudry, I know we've got Easter Road, we've got the two home games. When you go to Ibrox, I don't think you throw Johnston in for that game. And that, you know, it's probably says a lot. This guy's played over 30 times for his country. Canada, he's just came off the back of a World Cup. But if Ralston has a you know a really good run of games, I'd be wanting Ralston to start at Ibrox. I know it's a bit early to be having that chat just now, but but would you agree with that, or do you think you, you go with the experience that Johnson has, having come off the back of a World Cup? I think right, 
Honestly, uh, my honest opinion on Anthony Ralston. If I'm going to praise Josip Juranovic, right, and I'm going to say he's worth 56 million if he lifts the World Cup, I would say right now, on his level, he walks into any Premiership defence. He's at least worth 38 million. At least. I, w- I wouldn't even I wouldn't even like to sit down at my table unless you're coming with 38 million. Uh, so I've got to hold Anthony Ra- Antonio Ralston, right, the person who's competing with him, taking that jersey off him. I've got to hold him in that same regard. I'm actually... Surprised a lot more clubs don't come in and try to undercut Celtic, given we undervalue our own. Uh, mm. What I think about Anthony Ralston is when you think back to uh, Jock Steen and what he managed to do with players from Scotland, from Glasgow, local players, he's a lion. For me, he's a lion. He's a local player who's been raised within the club and uh, he's, he's coming into his own. He's stepping into that position. He's making it his own. And part of the reason I feel Juranovic is wanting to leave so keenly is because he feels that lion's breath breathing down his neck. Antonio Ralston is a lion amongst men. And if Alistair Johnston thinks he's just going to come in and take that jersey from him, not a chance. I can see him starting at Ibrox. I can see him playing fantastic. I can see him, can, can see him continuing to play fantastic, as he has done, playing second fiddle. For, for no reason. For no reason other than uh, Josip Juranovic's higher profile. Slightly mm. older age, slightly older world cup semi finalist in front of him, doesn't he? Now? It, exactly. But Anthony Ralston in this period has also gained international experience. Mm-hmm. He's been capped for Scotland. He's done that yep. off his own back from zero to hero. That's what that means. We need to support our own a lot more, our own homegrown talent, our own homegrown players. Uh, I love th- uh, thinking about it, theorising about what Sally would be in the future. Uh, Talking about is uh, maybe buying like Shamrock Rovers and having that as a, a a club that we send all of our youth players to and we develop them. Not only that, buying a North American team, an Australian team, you know what I mean? A team in Canada, establishing the Celtic group like the Man City group, feeding all these clubs, bringing all these managers in and having Ange Postacoglu teach them how to play the Ange way, adopt that system across all of those clubs worldwide have global Celtic, have global impact, have global resources, drawing players from all over the world, from untapped markets. We could uh, find the next big talent across the world and bring it to yeah, Celtic. The ties with the City Group are, are, are there to see. That seems to be the, the closest thing um, with should, regards to that. A, we should make our own City Group. You get me, well, Declan? We shouldn't, I've, we, I've, we shouldn't be sitting here thinking to ourselves, well, I love Ange Postacoglu being the manager. He's on an elite level. He's, but if a mm-hmm. big club comes in for him, they're going to take him. So what's the difference between us and that big club? We probably become the Dermot, big club. Probably Dermot Desmond, because I think if he just heard that, he'll be sweating, but we'll, we'll move on. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think he'd be sweating, bro. I think Celtic have inquired about uh, acquiring I, I think, clubs. You know I think I mean? the, the, the link, though, is still the, the City group. That is the obvious thing there. And I just don't think, you know, playing within... The structure that Celtic play in, does ever a, a chance in, in hell that that ever happens? Um, but well, we can ha- I dream. Think that'll happen, bro. I we think that'll can happen. dream. Um, but we'll, we'll move on. First. Hit like, well, hit like and chat. We can, we can <laughs> come back and we can come back and find that one there if it does ever happen one day. But you know, Lawrence, um, I, I don't think one of the questions coming in here is if, if GJ goes in January, Nelson plays eighty percent of games until the end of the season. Um, but with AJ playing odd game at Celtic Park, I don't see a situation like that happening at all. I, I don't think that Ralston's going to come in and he's going to have a stinker, but I just think that when you're shelling out three million quid on Canadian international, blah, 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 he's eventually going to go in there and he's likely going to play the role that that, that, that Juranovic was and you'll see both rotate. Do you think that's going to be a situation that we get? No, look at Burnaby and Taylor. It was a situation there. You know, three million for Burnaby. He didn't come in and displace Taylor straight away. You know, he's had the odd, odd bit of game to, time now and again. You know, it's similar situation. Again, you know, Johnson's a wee, wee bit older, a wee bit more experienced, but I think Angie's going to judge it on its merits. And if Anthony Ralston's doing the business on the park, Johnson will find it hard to get in. Much the same way as Burnaby did. You know, Taylor was doing business on the park and, and Burnaby just struggled to get a look in. It's the one thing AJ said that he's pressed up, wasn't it, bro? Nothing at Celtic is a given. Everything is earned. Love to hear that. Just love to hear that. That's competition right there. That's everyone's jacket is on a shaky peg. Is that really your shot? Are you earning it every week, every day in training? 
I love it. That, <laughs> that should be the, that should be the, the situation that you create there, and I think you've did that with the the strength and depth. Um, the squad that we've got. So that, that was our chat, Juranovic. If anybody else wants to add into that, please do in the comments. Um, keen to hear your views on your Endura um, and the situation which it causes with Alistair Johnson. We've already touched on um, Jura seeking out Alistair Johnson after the the game um, when Croatia faced Canada at the World Cup. Um, Lawrence, again, yesterday, um, gig pod, uh, Stevie had asked, uh, not Stevie, Rizzo had asked him um, around how how quickly after he'd spoken to Ange Postecoglou did they want to go to the club? And, and Johnson's, you know, reaction was, you know, almost instantly. He said there was a guy cut from the same cloth and, and whatever else. And, and again, it's it's great to hear things like this, that the manager has such a big part to play um, on players deciding to, to move to Celtic. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's got a massive, massive influence, hasn't he? It's, I think it's that focus he's got. Uh, he wants players that, you know, you can trust. That there's a definite connection between between Ange and his players, the players that he brings out, and you know they, they seem to want to run through brick walls for them, because it is you know Ange's mantra, we, you know we don't stop. He needs to know that these players are like that, that they're going to give him everything. And it's no surprise it's kind of a, a mutual feeling, I suppose, when the player speaks to him, is it? You know, that, that they both like each other. So yeah, you know we can work together. We're going to work together well. Any player that's looking to develop his career has got to look at Andrew's reputation as a coach for developing players. So if you're in your early 20s, you want to go somewhere where you're going to develop yourself, you want to play under a good coach in front of 60,000 people, regular Champions League football. There's not many clubs that are going to give you that. Throw into that, you know, you're, you're winning the league probably and a cup most seasons, if not all three. Yeah, absolutely. Um and again, you know, on that point, you're talking about kind of younger players and whatever else coming in. Martin, he spoke about this kind of revolution. Um, Johnson, you know, and you building this kind of you know, revolution of players cut from the same cloth. And again, I want to get one of it was what I was asking about with inverted fullback shortly. But he spoke about young players building this revolution towards, um, you know, just just building something special. And that's the feeling that I think any player in Ivan at Celtic is getting just now from Manchester Post to Koglu. And it's just really refreshing that you've got the manager playing such a big part in it and you're hearing the positive impact that he has on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 bro. Uh, sorry uh, for the chat and that. I keep reading the comments there. Somebody says I was double done in Weetabix. Love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the manager, I think, is an inspirational figure. You know what I mean? He inspires people. He comes from humble beginnings. He knows what it is to strive to be an elite-level athlete. And he can bring that out in players. He thrives on competition and he will give young players a chance. He will not throw them under the bus. He will, he will defend them to the hill. Uh, players, got to, players have got to love that. They've got to come for that opportunity. It's so easy to sell. Glasgow Celtic is an opportunity for players. It's with the Champions League football, exactly as Lawrence says, exactly as Lawrence highlighted there. Uh, that is all the selling points of our amazing club. The support the domestic success when we can achieve it uh, and the manager his ability the infrastructure i, I think uh, it, it's excellent right now loving it as it's going very well um and lawrence you know apart from Ange post speaking um to our new right back um also he, he was saying in his interview that, that callum mcgregor once again saw him out we knew that when joe hart came in and again it, it speaks volumes with Callum McGregor, I think, as a, as a figure and a character. It's Celtic. In, in Johnson's comments, he's talking about going to war for him, being an inspiration. He's a real leader, a real captain. He's saying all the right things. And again, it's great to know that the captain's making that sort of impression in people. We know he leads from the front. And we know that behind the scenes, when, when players are arriving and whatever else, he's welcoming And again, it connects to that culture that comes from the very top of the manager that bleeds all the way down through the club just now. Yeah, you know, I think it's important having people that have been a club for so long, like Callum, know what it's all about, that can explain to people, you know. I remember when Burns was manager, you had know, a player saying, you know, Tommy would turn up uh, with DVDs and, or videos and would sit and watch videos about Celtic and about the history. It really made, made players aware, you know, what Celtic means to people. Was it, was it Van Hoy don't click at one of the videos? I should have heard uh, that story <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so it looks like Callum's carrying on that tradition, making sure people know how important this is and what club means to people. 
you've, you hear big Mercedes saying it in his interview, didn't you? You know, it's a, so it's great that the, the new players are buying into what Celtic's all about. You know, and the manager and Callum, huge part of that, as do the fans. Absolutely, and you know, we know that Callum McGregor, he says in his book um, about the influence Tommy Burns had on him, and that's actually quite a nice connection to make, Lawrence, I, I hadn't really thought about that, but again, it goes back to what Martin was saying about Ralston earlier as well, it's good to have homegrown talents in and around the club that know what the club are all about, and you know, Celtic's global reach in terms of scouting has been sensational, we've brought in players from all across the world, and when you have guys like that that can really sell the club to them, um, it's, it's refreshing to hear and exciting um, to, to be a part of. Martin, I had asked Johnson about the inverted fullback role due to the fact he'd played at the right side of a back three um, for Canada, having lied to his manager to do so. He's played as a wing back, he's played at a right back. And it was interesting yesterday that identified Celtic and Man City as only two teams that really play this sort of system. But again, as a fullback, it must be an exciting system to play. And also for Alistair Johnson, saying that he started his career off um, as a midfielder, so he's really looking forward to playing that inverted fullback role. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love these comments when he said, like, from his early days playing some ice hockey. Uh, I took for that that he enjoyed the physicality and he knows how to roll with a challenge. So he says he would welcome the physicality of the Scottish League. Love that as well. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to thrive here, really. I love his positive attitude. He's, his comments about uh, Cal Mack were right on the money. Uh, Cal Mack really leads to be an excellent quality of training. I believe uh, Bruni said that as well, mm. uh, especially when uh, his new appointment. Uh, mm. Scott Brown said that Cal Mack was actually impeccable at training, just really takes it a cut above. And you always love to hear the influence of uh, other legends about the club, bringing in DVDs and really extending the history, you know what I mean? Uh, the history of Glasgow Celtic to players. And that's something that Callum McGregor will be really good at. It, it, making these players understand exactly what Celtic is, what they represent, Absolutely. who they represent, what it means to us. Love yep. the comments from Big Maurice Jens saying about uh, this club being a religion. It's just one of the one one of the ones you sit down and you're like, right, he gets it, definitely he mm -hmm. gets it. He's making all the right signals. I want him to stay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, well he, he's that. one that he's one that, you know, people are maybe questioning whether he will stay or not. I know that's been something that was spoke about on here the now that Kobe Ashes came in and um, the price tiger and Moritz Jensen. I don't know if it's going to be out of Celtic's reach and um, that's something that we're still yet to see. But again, as you say, good comments to hear from players. Um and again it's good Lawrence that we're not just getting these sort of comments come out and the players don't do the business on the park. Certainly everybody um, if you think back to to Yakimakis who I know is another person who has transfer a question mark surrounding him at this point in time, but you know, when he came out last season and said that about the better squad, it was justified when he said it. I'm not a big fan of players making comments as such like that, but if you really believe that and you think you're going to do it, then why not? But you know, back to what I was saying there, inverted fullback though it is something that players need to adapt to. I don't think Burnaby's probably exactly where he wants to be with it yet, but guys like Taylor, Ralston, Juranovic have all pretty much perfected it and Johnson looks as if he's going to be another guy who really thrives playing that sort of system Yeah definitely I mean I think for Taylor you know being an ex-midfielder you know, in his career it was maybe a wee bit easier for him so you know, Bernabe's a converted winger so it's, it's maybe going to prove a wee bit harder for him but you know he's got time on his side he's young I'm sure he'll get there yeah, you know and he's uh, definitely he's got the focus of play that way so if anyone can coach the minute it's going to be Ange so, yeah, you know, the recruitment's been, been amazing and it's good that, uh, you know, Big Mercedes has come out saying stuff like that. But, you know, if JJ goes, it puts another pot of money in there for other players. I don't think i just finished shopping yet, yet you know. and I like this new nickname, Lawrence. It's, it's quite a good one for you, by the way, mate. Big Mercedes Jens. I quite like that. I've so, never heard that so, before. So, it's, uh, you know, for me, if JJ goes, I'd be looking up top, you know. With 80 odd chances, we scored three goals and, and got one OG in the Champions League. We need a bit, of, a bit more quality up there. And, you know, if Yakimakis wants to move on, you know, so be it. But we need to be bringing players in. You know, I think Musa is probably, you know, is probably out of our reach now. He's probably, you know, looking at something like 80 grand a week wages, probably way out of reach. But, 
if you could sign another Musa, you know, could you imagine that that an Ange team? I think that's the, the, the talent that's missing up top, just now. And that's, that's somebody who, you know, Lawrence was a top, top quality player um, in, in Moussa Dembele. I thought that, you know, this season with the experience that both Kyogo and Yakimak has got the Champions League would hopefully um, give them something to go into the tournament next year if we're there. But again, you don't want to take that risk. You want to have somebody in the building who, you know, can do it at that stage. Um, and I think it's a pretty fair comment to make. The, the thing I had a wee laugh there was, you know, relating to what you were saying about Tommy Burns with the old tapes. Um, Grant's come in to say that he could watch Casanova DVDs for months and still wouldn't turn into Lionel Richie. So there's, there's, there's one to make you chuckle on this Tuesday. Um, Lawrence, you know, you've been someone who has championed Scott Robertson on this podcast for a long, long time. And it looked as if, you know, maybe the, the breakthrough was going to come. Um, he was part of the match day squad in the Champions League most likely just due to the way that UEFA uh, works with that in terms of the squad and homegrown talent, etc. But then again, he was selected for Sydney. We knew the team was a bit depleted. But it came out today, it looks as if he's going to head elsewhere. Um, he had a really good season down at Crewe. Um, and we know that Scott Brown is interested in him. He obviously made his debut when Scott was in and around the club. Um, and also St Mern. Just on Scott Robertson, we do what he chat about this too much but just on Scott Robertson where do you think you'd be suited going to I think it would be going down to Fleetwood with Bruni and getting away from Scottish football what was your thoughts on that Lawrence? I think I'd get more money down south than some mm. could pay you, you, you know that's for definite uh, and it, it, it is sure, sure they can do it at that level but I think you know if he does move on it's, it's maybe something that the club's been working on Basically, keeping players about for too long when it's obvious they're not going to make the breakthrough, and it's it's just got to that stage. There's too many people in front of him. It's just not going to happen for him. He needs to go for the sake of his career. We should get a decent fee for him, and then you know it's more money to reinvest in the squad. Yeah, what what kind of fee do you think we'd be looking for? Because again, his contract's up May next year, meaning pre-contract could be January time or a cut price deal. If it's going to be a cut price deal, you're talking a few hundred thousand. Do you think? Yeah, I think maybe four or five hundred thousand for him. Yeah, tell, tell us what you think of the comments and that. I, again, Martin, do you think that Scott Robertson was potentially building up to the point of getting in the first team, moves down to Gillingham, Doncaster Rovers, and latterly Crew. He had that injury at Crew, I think mid February uh, this year. That kind of curtailed him, and that's been it ever since. Um, so. What, what do you think in terms of Scott Robertson? Do you think there was ever going to be the point he was going to get into the team? Um, but obviously now that point looks to have passed. I think that's that's what I was trying to like highlight on earlier on. Sorry, uh, that when I was saying that we should uh, maybe loan these players out and maybe look at having other clubs, clubs that we supply with players and take over. Uh, those those younger players that are not quite making the breakthrough here at Celtic. Could have the chance to develop further because sitting on the bench is not getting them any first first team experience, and that's what mm. they really need. And um, Lawrence is certainly correct. Uh, earn a lot more money going south of the border, uh, playing the same position, doing the same job. If someone wants to pay you a hundred pounds a day for being a street sweeper, and you're only getting ten pounds a day here. You're not going to go and sweep his streets. <laughs> that's exactly what I would do. You look at your your best prospect or best move, and you pursue that. Uh, who knows what the future holds? You could go and pursue your career at another club and end up in a roundabout way, right back where you started. Mm. Gary's come in here to say that he believes that Robertson will stay as well as other young academy players for the <coughs> European quota. His contract is out in, in May um, next year, and it looks as though Celtic aren't going to be renewing his contract, so he is going to head um, elsewhere. And again, Lawrence, it probably comes back to this, been highlighting the comments here. Um, behind the scenes, that this is in relation to Johnny Kenny, um, he hasn't been playing at Queen's Park, doesn't look as though he has it cut it at championship level, unfortunately. Um, he's been mainly used as a substitute for, for Queen's, who are absolutely flying just now. I think they're third or fourth in the championship. That's the kind of club, you know, I think I get the crux of what Martin was saying earlier. I keep saying it on here, but, but Queen's, to me, Lawrence, are the type of team that Celtic should be looking at and possibly getting a connection with. I know it's not really worked out for players such as Ryan Mullen, Luke O'Connell and, and Johnny Kenny, but looking at a bigger picture with us with Queen's Park, that could be the, the, the possible route that we could take. Queen's Park, I, I think they've maybe get ambitions to be the third force, at least in Scottish Why football. Not? 
Why not? My so, local team's not doing it, so why not? So I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's part of the Queen's Park because I, I think their ambitions are, you know, third force to, at least. But yeah, you'd, you'd want a team that, you know, a professional setup that Queen's Park have got that you can maybe loan a number of players to and could get, get them in the team playing along, alongside each other. But, you know, we can kind of talk about it often. Nothing's really re- replaced the reserve league sufficiently for level of experience and, and bleeding play players into the first team. You know, they're getting to play with, with guys coming back to injury. They're getting to play it against other players at a decent level. And it's how we get around that, whether it's, you know, getting other teams or loan options. Maybe it's a combination of it. But, yeah, it, it, it's something we need to do. But I'm probably, you know, I'm disappointed that Rox is not going to make it. I thought he was a decent player. But I'm glad that we're looking to move him on but without hanging on him for too long. You know, because I think it would harm his career yeah. if he was to hang about much longer. Not really getting like first-team football. We, we, we always go down south for loan now and again. I, I, I think, you know, Selling for what we can get get from this window. There's probably a few other players in, in, in that position that need to be moved on as well. The, you know, kind of defensive mid. But Gucci, it's not happened for him, is it? Hmm. Probably move him. Abel Guards, well, he's only here to me. So, yeah. The, you'd see maybe a, a bit of change there. I don't know if Angie's got his eye on another number six. Maybe that's three that would be counting him out the door. Okay, absolutely. Um, Martin, you know, Pat's come in here in the comments to say that, that, that Cal Max, loan to Notts County, worked to treat uh, needs to be the model alongside loans out to Hibs, Dons, Dundee United, etc. That, that is one that I think we'll always go back to and that, that Callum didn't make his Celtic debut till late on. Um, and again, the, the pathway could have potentially been there for, for Robertson to do that, but it's just not worked out. There's obviously been a change of managers, whatever else. I don't know if Neil Lennon had plans for, for Scott Robertson while he was at the club and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, t- to relate this in, you know, I think it's important that we do that and we have those, I think what you call it, feeder teams that we just work alongside. I think that would be important. But I want to go back to what Lawrence mentioned. Y- Yusuke Adeguchi is one who, I-, I can't say I don't feel sorry for him because... He came in alongside Rio and, and Dyson, who made a massive impact last season. With Nair Beaton leaving, and, and Ange probably knowing that, and around that January time, it looked to do once again with dinner homework. Brought in Gucci here, ready made number six. He's played in British football before at Leeds. I know it didn't work out there. Um, and here he, are, here he is alongside his two fellow J League um, players, but it's just not worked out. And again, I think the, the question I want to ask you is. The setback against Allo in the Scottish Cup, if that doesn't happen, do you see a different path for Gucci? Or do you think there was always risk with this transfer? Because I know that Liam, when we've had him on, has said that he was the one that he was most surprised about coming to Celtic. Um, but what is your take on it? Do you think he's just been unlucky at Celtic? Or is it just I think, I think uh, just Scottish football, British football, it's just not worked out for him? I think when Ange came in, uh, it was... And you remember the circumstances, it was COVID, lockdown. So mm-hmm. he had no real way of meeting and getting a no or a grasp, really, with the players until he got here. And then he had a, a period where he was in a hotel room in isolation here for like two weeks, where he was video calling players and getting to know them. I believe mm-hmm. he made the decision to bring these players with him because he felt they could directly impact the squad immediately. Say Cal Mack wasn't on board with going his way. Uh, I believe Gucci was there. He was going to go come right into that place and play that position. It hasn't quite worked out for him. He got injured. Cal Mack is certainly calibers streaks and streaks above, and he's fully on board with what Andrew's doing. So Gucci sort of faded to the background. Uh, I do see him going back to Japan. Uh, I do see him as surplus to requirements. I do feel sorry for him. As much as that's worth, you know what I mean? He's still been getting paid very good wages. He's yep. been here loving it. So I don't really feel that sorry for him. Uh, if he couldn't, st- if he couldn't get a place, if he couldn't take a game and command a spot while Cal Mack was injured, then maybe it just wasn't right for him to begin with, and he should look at going back home. And I, I think Celtic could uh, maybe cheekily reap a profit from going from him going back home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. Sounds. I think one of his former clubs are one of the teams interested in him. So there's there's also possibly. The potential that the club he moved from to Celtic might have a, a possible kind of 
a buyback auction on him, which would make things a lot easier for himself and and mm. obviously uh, Celtic. But but Lawrence again, you know what Martin says that is quite interesting. The, the, the chance for probably all these players, including Jimmy McCarthy, including Oliver Abelgard, who although the manager says was one who wasn't likely going to be used until the second part of the season. You saw Haksabanovic made the impact that he wanted him to. You saw Moy play 20 games. Um, it probably was the chance for those guys. And the fact that he went to O'Reilly playing that, that pivot role um, probably speaks volumes about what the manager sees in the rest of them and likely wants that versatility, the flexibility that we see up the other end of the park and that role of the six. That they're, they're not just a six, no-nonsense defender, that they can really play in any position in that midfield. Yeah, I mean, you know, they say time waits for no man. These guys have to grasp their opportunity when it presents itself. Or else it ends up passing them by. You know, when we go to with his injuries and that, you know, there's an element of feeling sorry for him, but you know, sometimes that's football, you know. And Abelgaard, you know, he's been there. It, it, you know, obviously thought he was going to be the player when he came in, but he's looked okay. But mm. O'Reilly's right, been moved back <laughs> And he's looked excellent back there. So, yeah, it's about taking our chances. And unfortunately, these players haven't done it. And yeah, you move them on. But when that's becoming obvious, you, you get what you can for them. You reinvest it in the squad. That's it. Yep. And a big part of that will be be wages um, with some of those guys. Martin, just to kind of ask on O'Reilly there, but well, we're on him. Um, scored two goals at the weekend. And if you've seen the clips, they're two absolutely cracking goals. It looked like a kickabout in a public mm-hmm. park, um, so I'm not reading too much into the, the, the friendly against Reigns, but just in terms of O'Reilly, just taking out from that game, I don't think it would be any surprise that you might see him pop up with a few goals um, within the next month for, for two, just because he's probably going to return to that more advanced position in midfield, and you know, I, mm-hmm. I think up until now he's played he's played pretty well um, playing the pivot, but I'd like to see him uh, get some more goals back into his game when he, when he takes that step kind of forward in midfield, would you agree with that? Yeah, well, that, that's what I was going to you know, just say there, Declan, was what the two of you touched on there, was I do feel sorry for Abelgard and or Abelgard, as I call them often, and Idiguchi, right? I feel sorry for those players. More than them, I feel sorry for Matt O'Reilly, who had to drop back from his advanced position that had them being considered of getting an international call-up and possibly yeah, going to the point. World Cup. He had yep. to drop back and play a midfield deep-lying role. Therefore, he wasn't producing those goals that we keep talking about, that we all expected of him, that we've seen him replicate in those clips from the friendly with Wren. Uh, I think uh, we really need to be grateful to Matt O'Reilly for uh, sacrificing that for our team, for the manager. He he dropped back, played that position, uh, thrived in that position. He certainly added a lot to his game. You have no found respect for Callum McGregor and what Callum McGregor does in there. Mm-hmm. And a, a better understanding of what he's doing and what's going on in there while he's in his more advanced position and he will thrive for it. But I do I do honestly think, just dawning upon me there as we spoke, that the sacrifice that O'Reilly made by dropping back and playing that position uh, should not be underestimated. That is, like, really it carries uh, gravity. I think yep. uh, and, him and it back says and about, that sacrifice. And it says about the versatility of the players and I think Lawrence, you know, as I say there, that with um, the signings that we've seen, guys like Haksabanovic and whatever else, the manager certainly wants players who who don't just fit one position. He wants that versatility and flexibility that he can use them um, to, to to the best of their abilities for the team impact. And I think that's what it's all about. It's healthy just now that you're not just going to be, you know, that is your position and, and stick to it. That you see guys like Jota switch wings, you see Haksabanovic drop into midfield. I've seen Moy take that wee bit more advanced role. And we all probably thought he was going to sit in there as a holder. Um, and that's why probably looking forward, if we do look to bring in what would we would describe as a number six, a pivot, blah, 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 that we don't just want somebody like an Airbeaton who will just sit in front of the defence. We want somebody who can do what kind of Moyes practically done and play play both positions. Although I think more of us would prefer Moy in that kind of eight role than we would play in the pivot role. But would you agree that if we're looking towards any future players coming in in that position, we look at a kind of hybrid player that will be able to play one or two positions? Yeah, I mean... I More than two positions. Like, you know, there was links to uh, Isis Laiduni, uh, who yes. have faced Fenix Faros. Yep. Uh, Lawrence will remember him. Um, he played at Ibrox in 2003. Um, 
So that is a new one for you, Lawrence. You've you got that right away. Um, but he is one that we've been looking at. Remember him, Lawrence mm -hmm. Lydoni? There's been a few teams that have did that against Celtic, isn't there? Oh. Um, but <laughs> uh, but th there is there is potential for that one. Um, and again, Lawrence, as I say, there, do you think that we're going to look for somebody with that flexibility? I, I think it's a deep line play playmaker. That's what Hans describes it as, doesn't he? But, but I think we need to just get rid of the idea that it's a defensive midfielder now. Yeah, so while that you describe that as hybrid, I, I think it's someone that's got you know the range of passing back there and got has got a football brain. Yeah, I think that's why you know Arai really does so well back there, doesn't he? And, mm. and Callum does really well back there. Both of them, you know, you, you kind of you feel they're a wee bit wasted because they, they are really good further forward. But I suppose it's where you're starting your attack from. It's it's the quicker switch, isn't it? You know, it's the speed of transition that Angie's team depends on. So. Having a, a deep line playmaker gives you that. You know, there's been talk of when Yama coming back. I, I don't think for me he would be the player. You know, but uh, I, I think we'll definitely be looking at someone uh, for that position. But uh, I don't, I don't think uh, when Yama would be the answer. Is that is that priority in January for you, Lawrence, or is that something that can wait till the summer? I, I will leave it to the summer for me. The, you, you know, you've got Callum, you've got Moy, and you've got Riley. All prove. They can play that you know, fairly well. Uh, for me, the priority's got to be you know, a Champions League level striker. You, you, you know, we just can't create that many chances and you know, eighty odd shots and a goal and three goals. That's you, you know, you, if that's the kind of what's that about four percent of your chances you're taking. You, you, you know, no wonder you're not progressing from the group. We need to up the level and it's taking our chances. Easiest way to do that is get better strikers in. Mm. Martin, do, do you think, you know, in terms of that conversation around strikers, I know we're flip flopping about here, but two of the different positions, but can be something you can do in the summer, or does it need to be just out to let them bed in? Because I think if you're a good goal scorer, you should be able to bring them in in the summer. And again, as I touched on earlier, that the market will have changed a bit going into this off the back of a World Cup, but there's still potential for January to be a sticky market, and it might be the case that. To, to, to get a good striker or an offer, you might need to wait to the, the summer months. Is that something you'd be quite comfortable doing now? Yeah, I, I, I would like us to add a third striker. Uh, mm. I, I would like us to maintain the strikers we've got if Giamakis is fully there and fully in it. Uh, I don't know what the level of that is right now. Uh, if that's not there, then we should definitely be looking at striking options. And Lewis is 100% bang on the money when he says 80 chances created in the Champions League is amazing. Uh, the volume of conversion of those chances was not amazing. <laughs> so we need to really address that issue. Uh, Adam Bailey, someone of his calibre, his level of finishing, uh, there's, there's, uh, I do believe we could add it in January, give them that time to settle. If it's a young player, uh, we could see him brought in in January. A young player of, of what calibre, but you know what I mean? Uh, like a, a Endrick, uh, someone uh, out of this world are we going to see? Uh, are we going to see someone, a budding young talent? Are we going to see an established player like Dembele mm. come in? I think it fits more in, Algi, uh, in Angie's mould to sign a younger player, a budding talent, and bring him in. And given Giamakis his age, I think he is approaching, peaking his value at the club. So the murmurs of him maybe moving may be more advanced in the summer than they are now in January. But this is the early stages, the early, murmur the early murmurings of that move being a a possibility. So yes, I do believe we should be fully looking at various striking options. Very mm. striking options. Lawrence, if it's a case that, you know, Yakimakis, we know again, it's important to emphasise at this point, it is only reports and we can only base our chat around that. But if there is the point that, that, that Jacko's potentially looking for that move away, to me, the best way of going around this is it could be a risk to try and replace his goals in January and, and therefore from now until May time if there is any issue I really hope there isn't that you have some kind of gentleman's agreement in place that, that Celtic will meet him halfway in the middle in terms of wages or whatever you'll have him to the summer and then you let the big man pick his move do you think that would be the best outcome for ourselves? Yeah I mean, I mean we've only got two striking options up, up, up top really we're, we're playing as strikers we don't play my either as a striker so yeah, if he was to move, then it all falls to Kyogo. And, you know, there was a period last season where you know, Joey Dawson got a game against St. Johnston, didn't he? So, somebody mentioned him earlier, yeah. 
So carrying two, a team with only two strikers, you know, a couple of injuries, then we'd argue. So I, I think we're short in numbers for a striker position. And, you know, I think we need to up the quality. So I don't think we could afford to let Yakimakis go yeah, in the winter. Deadline. Not unless we're bringing two in. You know, and I don't think we bring two in. So yeah, I think his would be a summer move. Yeah, it's it's one we'll we'll, we'll keep our eye on. We'll, we'll keep up to date. I, I'd rather that. I think it's harder to replace someone. You know, it's hard to replace goals in your team. Full stop. Um, and we know that Yakimakis can do that as long as there's no issue there. I'd like to see him stay in and around the club. It came at the time in the show where we can eventually say, let's look forward to the weekend. But you know, I know um. We'll be tuning in some of us to watch Croatia Argentina tonight and um, to see how Judah gets on. Um, it's been it's been strange because I was right used to that ten o'clock game, one o'clock, blah blah, and that was how the day. And then when it started dropping off to three and seven, it was hellish. And now it's just terrible that when you get these big gaps of football, but the proper football's back. We go to Pataudry at the weekend. Martin, any su- any surprises you think will be in our starting uh, eleven? And do you think? I know in the, the training video yesterday, Moyes featured in it, Maeda. Um, these guys, I don't think they'll start, but I think they'll certainly be in the bench for Celtic at the weekend. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, CCV will come in. He will start definitely at the back yeah. with Jens, uh, Taylor. Jens? Ralston. So not Starfield? Not Starfield? Uh, no, no. I think, uh, per- personally, my own personal opinion is I think we'll seek to move on CCV and play Starfield at right centre-back with Jens mm. and moving forward. But in Kobayashi, is they're slightly younger, looking to fill Jens's position when we eventually move him on as well. But everyone says I love to sell everyone. That's, that's just me. I just uh, love the developing. I think it's going to be that fast-paced and that fast-developing at the club uh, in the future. Uh, so but see, CCV is important to come into that team because I know at the weekend... Um, now I think last... he's paramount. Yep, some somebody laughed about my comment when I said a public park, but that's what it did look about. I mean, you know, I, I've played at Kelvin Grove a few times, and it looked as if it was quite a similar uh, surface to mm-hmm. that. But um, yep, it was Starfield and Jens at the weekend. Lawrence, you, what do you think the manager's going to do with this one? Because I think that's an interesting chat. Probably have later on in the week. But do do you think that he'll go back to Starfield Vickers? Now, now he's got that option. Obviously, Starfield get more minutes under his belt, and Sydney came back into the team. And important to emphasize, emphasize this, didn't get the proper pre season because of the injury with Sweden. He's now had that time to work with the manager, the whatnot. To me, Starfield and Vickers at the weekend at Pit Audrey. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with that Starfield, Vickers, Taylor, Ralston, Hart. Yeah, I think that's the back five, isn't it? Aye, yep, I'm, I'm good with that as well. Um, midfield, McGregor back in, O'Reilly advancing Hatati in there, gentlemen. Agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if McGregor will be in from the start. I don't know if he's fit. Surely. I don't know if he'll be in from the start. Yeah, I, think I, I, I think if he's fit and available to play, there's no doubt about it, Callum McGregor starts for you at Pitodri. We'll see. Yeah, I, I, I maybe start O'Reilly. Because I, I, I don't know how up to speed McGregor is, just so you know. So I'd start with, start with O'Reilly there. Expecting would to you, be a hyper-competitive game mm, at Pitodri. So would you, would you think Lawrence is more... Along mm. the lines with Cal Mack maybe coming on in the second half. But would you both then maybe think the game against Livingston's possibly a better game because you're at home, Celtic Park, and whatever else for a game like McGregor? But whereas I think McGregor's the type of player that if he wants to play a bold play, um, I know people say don't rush him, but for me, Cal McGregor starts for Celtic at the weekend. We can live it's... without him. We have, we have seen that. Sorry, Lawrence, can. cut yep. you off and jump in there. So we should live without him, and he needs protected. He is just coming back from. Uh, quite a long lay off and quite a bad injury. Yeah, I know he's had that friendly run out, but uh, really we should protect him. We see how valuable he is, how much of an asset he is to the team, uh, how much of a leader he is, how valuable he is on the training ground. Watch one more week, leave him out for the Pitodre game. It'll be a, it's frosty up there. It's an icy pitch, you know. Protect him, bring him back to paradise, maybe start him second, uh, second half at Pitodre, but bring him back fully at paradise and uh, roll him out there, in my opinion. Sorry, Lawrence. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, I, I mean, I mean, I think McGregor's always, you know, he's fit. It is a long way off. So, yeah, I, I'd be starting with O'Reilly. You know, the team's been playing well. It's, if you bring McGregor in, it's maybe a bit early for him. Yeah, you, you, you know, it is an away game. 
you, you want to guarantee the three points, don't you? So I'd, I'd be starting the right with. Mm. I think to make sure you definitely guarantee those three points McGregor starts for me because he's your captain and that petodi has been almost impossible for teams this season so for me McGregor and, but that's what football's all about it's all about opinions up top any any surprises in there Jota I think it's a stick on to, to start lately Kyogo um, Haksabanovic do you think maybe do you think we'll start to see him be the, the kind of starting yeah. pick I, I, I think he'll come more into the second part of the season you know, he, he's looked good so far, but, but yeah, I'm starting with Haxa Banovic. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Martin? Haxa? Yeah, uh, I think we'll start to rely on Haxa a lot more. Uh, he will become more prominent. Uh, quality player. Absolute quality. Yes. Uh, I believe he'll show that a lot more. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get the benefits of that. I do think uh, sometimes players need to be protected from their, from themselves, as Kyogo found out in the League Cup and Lots of us found out sometimes these players need to be protected from themselves. And I think Andrew's not going to be slowing down that. Uh, so I do think that will be that will factor with Cal Mack. Uh, I hope like we're not stealing everybody's points to, to continue on and discuss it. It's a, it's a long time between here and the, the weekend, no, you know what I mean? There'll be plenty, there'll be plenty <laughs> to talk about. You could probably do a whole hour on the uh, CCV and, and, and uh, Starfield at the back. So there'll be plenty to talk about. Somebody asked me there about Hak- Haksibanovic, the right-hand side. I think the manager wants to play as switching them all the time throughout a game. So I don't think there's going to be really a, a safe position. Um, but for those two, we'll, we'll finish here, guys. Thanks for your chat today. Thanks for all your usual comments. We have made it to, to nearly the return of domestic football. Um, Kevin is saying that Lawrence usually to have a health warning for that Christmas tree behind you. And we, um, I can't find the comment here. There it's there. Uh, Grant, good luck with the old Casanova DVD. So hopefully you get the box set for Christmas if you don't have them all um, and <laughs> enjoy it. We'll be back covering everything on our daily bulletins here in a Celtic state of mind. Remember, our charity weekend is coming up, so if you do have some spare time over the weekend and have some surplus cash, all donations will be welcome. They're going to a great cause once again. You will enjoy the glory in the dream when it comes out. Martin Lawrence, thank you for joining me on the Celtic state of mind.